Yo, what's going on? Welcome to the Path of Exile 3.20 Forbidden Sanctum reveal reaction video. Not get a chance to watch this live, so so I'm rewatching it now for the first time. We get some some gut reactions to this. Let's see uh see how the leaks looking. So be a pretty long video. It's not wasting time. Let's jump right into it. Okay, should be kicking off now. Chris Wilson from Hi, Chris. Gear Games. Thanks for joining us for today's live stream as we reveal our upcoming expansion, The Forbidden Sanctum. Wouldn't miss it. on December 9th on PC and Mac, and on December 14th on console. December 9th. Twitch drops are enabled on today's live stream, Eight days. so make sure you follow the instructions below in order to claim your Bloodguard wings. Here's what you Those wings are sick, first of all. I did get them. I threw those. I did watch the stream, but I had it running just to get the, the wings. Um, yep. You can expect from today's live stream. We'll start by debuting the trailer for the Forbidden Sanctum, and we'll then do okay. a deep dive on the leak itself. Okay. We'll cover this expansion's new endgame revamps and content. Okay. And we'll have a look at all the new skills we're introducing. New skills? We'll then reveal some new unique items and the massive buffs and rarity adjustments Eeks. we've made to a variety of endgame unique weapons. Okay. We'll then briefly cover some balance topics we have posted articles about. Okay, yeah, so these are the balance manifestos. These three are the balance manifestos. The Nemesis monster mod system. Ruthless, Finally, whatever. We'll discuss the upcoming release of the optional Ruthless game mode. Quality of life improvements. Quality of life improvements cool. and the new supporter packs. And it will stop there. The live stream <laughs> concludes with a Q&A session between Ziggy D and me, where we'll answer questions from Twitch chat. Did we watch those? I never watched the Q&A. Let's get started with a trailer for the Forbidden Sanctum, which launches in one week. Hype, 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 hype. Many have met their fate here in the shade of Fel Shrine. Okay. So step lightly. For here you are bound by new rules. My rules. Let's find the exit. My camera's open, let's find the exit in the upper right hand corner. Each step with gold to tempt you. So it's like a, a foe okay. to wound you. Is this like a boss a curse thing? To spite you. Thirty percent life. But do not give up. For vast riches await the bold. Pillage this sanctum if you must. The new and currency. One day you Cover its okay. Yeah, you're, everyone needs fights in the boss battle. Okay, I haven't seen like any like. Okay, makes sense. Okay, first reaction, Sanctum League. Um, boss scene looks like it is. Looks like you go room to room, collect some stuff, level up, make harder. It seems a little bit um. Ultimatum Miesk? Looks, looks like you get to make some choices and opt out earlier. We'll see. But. Okay, new skills. Okay. Yay, Ruthless. Ruthless Enjoyers. Let's go. Uniques? Fuck. Okay, what's that? That was the Atlas map, right? New at new oh, new Atlas nodes, sick. Always always up for more improvements at the end game. Two ways to farm stuff is always good. If the, if if Sanctum League's gonna be or Forbidden Sanctum's always gonna be like bossing, like doing bossing on the path of the on the tree doesn't make sense too, so. Got a reaction. Boston seems good. Can't kill bosses, he's probably not gonna uh, have a lot of fun. The Forbidden Sanctum is an old Templar enclave, long rumored to be hidden beneath the Fell Shrine ruins. Abandoned for a long time, it is now controlled by a malevolent entity. In this league, you'll explore it, find out its secrets, and deal with the evil that lurks there. The Sanctum Challenge League is a roguelike game, played out one rogue -like? time as you explore Rayclast and the Atlas in Path of Exile. In every area or map you enter, you can make a choice of which room in the Sanctum you will explore next. Okay. On the Sanctum map, you can see the contents of a few rooms ahead, enabling you to plot a path through its dangerous halls. 
and the Sanctum is dangerous. Like most roguelikes, you should not expect to be able to complete it on your first try. Getting to the deeper floors requires experience, knowledge, and luck. You should expect that your early attempts will fail, but over time, you'll be able to push yourself farther and farther. As you progress deeper into the Sanctum, you'll find a variety of treasures that will help you eventually fight your way to the dangers that await you at the end of its wait, wait, wait. course. Isn't this just Fear of Calandra, but different? Isn't this just Lake of Calandra, but different? But, like, more well thought out? <laughs> and bosses instead of mobs? Eventually, by endgame, you may be able to push through all four floors to face the final boss. Every roguelike needs a resource to help you track how well the run is yes, going. Yes, more currencies. In the Forbidden Sanctum, it is your resolve, indicated resolve. by this bar here. As you explore the Sanctum, your resolve is threatened by the dangers within. When you lose all of your resolve, your Sanctum run ends. How do you lose resolve? Your level of resolve is maintained between consecutive rooms on your run, but is only shown when you're in the Sanctum itself. The resolve mechanic applies equally to all build archetypes. Your okay. resolve is reduced when you are hit by monsters or environmental hazards in the Sanctum, and these telegraphed attacks are not affected by regular Path of Exile defensive mechanics, such as evasion, armor, or block. What? While these attacks do some nominal damage to your regular life, the bulk of their impact is against your resolve. This mechanic provides a mechanism for tracking- Is that like these like yellow things? Uh, probably not. And hopefully an answer, I think. It's like this, these yellow squares, is that- Things that take away your resolve, this isn't very clear. In your progress between rooms, where your regular life pool would long ago have been recovered. Another aspect of the resolve system is that characters who are struggling can be ejected from the Sanctum without actually having to die, avoiding experience loss or hardcore death. So oh, maintaining a healthy level of resolve is key as you navigate the Sanctum, and that means making careful choices of what rooms you enter. Let's have a look at some of the things that Sanctum rooms can contain. More trees. That's what we Afflicted need in this game. rooms cause you to gain an affliction when you enter them. Afflictions make your sanctum run more difficult. For example, reducing your resolve recovery, causing rewards to become hidden on the sanctum map, or causing sanctum rooms to spawn volatile anomalies that follow you. Yep. These minor afflictions accumulate as you get deeper and deeper into a run, sure. making it more challenging. Yep. Makes sense. Major afflictions exist and are a big deal. They have significant consequences, such as entirely preventing the recovery of resolve. So, a Sanctum run gets harder and harder as you pick up more afflictions. Sounds great. But every roguelike needs a way for you to gain power throughout your run. In the Forbidden Sanctum, that system is Boons. Boons, boons. are beneficial buffs that help you as you progress through the Sanctum. Minor boons make things a little easier, such as slowing down monsters or adding a special shield to your resolve called Inspiration. Major okay. boons don't come along often, but have large effects, such as preventing you from receiving more minor afflictions, or recovering your resolve to 50% the next time you run out. Due to okay. the vast variety of afflictions and boons, no two runs are the same. Generally speaking, your best sanctum runs are the ones where the afflictions you choose have little effect on you, and the boons either counteract them or have a large benefit for the strategy you're running. Some rooms in the sanctum contain a fountain, which will restore some of your lost resolve. Okay. Others contain afflicted fountains that restore even more resolve at a cost. Rooms with a treasure reward contain chests full of the Templar Aureus currency, a type of gold coin they used for commerce within their sanctum. You'll also find some Aureus coins from monsters that you kill as you explore. These are picked up automatically, like Azerite, and are not tradable, and Good. like your afflictions and boons, are lost when your sanctum run ends. Okay. Some rooms contain a merchant who accepts your Aureus coins in exchange for boons. Plan your purchases carefully, as you may encounter the merchant again later on with even more expensive boons to purchase. Ooh. Occasionally, okay. the sinister powers controlling the Sanctum will present you with a choice of making an accursed pact. You are given several pacts to choose from, and can even opt to take all that you are offered. All pacts have a big upside and a big downside, such as exchanging a portion of your maximum resolve for a random major boon. It's very oh, dangerous to make a pact, weird. but if you pick yeah, the right circumstances, swapping. your gamble could pay off. Maybe. In addition to rewards that help you progress through the Sanctum, many rooms let you immediately receive Path of Exile currency items, but with a twist. Whenever you're offered some currency items that you can receive right away, you are also offered a more valuable option that will be waiting for you after the boss fight at the end of the current floor of the Sanctum. It's a gamble, because if you fail your run before you reach and defeat the boss, you will not receive the reward you picked. Yeah, this is like ultimate vibes. On, you're this like this menu at least. of getting a massive currency reward that is conditional on completing your entire Sanctum run without failing. At a specific point in the Forbidden Sanctum storyline, 
You will discover a special altar that Templar relics what? can be placed on. There's more? These relics directly affect your Sanctum runs and are not lost when a run ends. They okay. persist throughout the League as a permanent source of meta progression. Acquiring new and better relics is one of the ways you can push farther and farther with each run you try. Relics cannot be crafted and cannot be traded, as they represent your personal progression throughout the League. You'll accumulate more than you can use simultaneously, so you'll have options to fine-tune your strategy from run to run. You can store your extra relics in the Relic Locker, a free storage space like the Expedition. Sweet! Free storage! Let's go! We don't want to spoil important story um, details, but the end boss of the... Quickly, um, those are unmodifiable and all, unmodifiable, unmodifiable and all the more um, magic that, I, that they showed, so... The Forbidden Sanctum can drop unique items from a pool exclusive to this league. Today we'd like to show you a unique amulet called Eternal Damnation. This amulet offers a powerful way to gain additional elemental mitigation by introducing the concept of elemental damage reduction. Despite the drawback of reducing your maximum resistances, if you have sufficient chaos resistance, this is more than compensated for. Oh, interesting. Because of the roguelike nature of the Forbidden Sanctum, defeating the boss of a floor is a difficult achievement and hence rewards a lot of experience. You may fail on the way, so if you do manage it, expect a good experience boost for your achievement. Holy, the bar? The bar was one of like... You went from four Another bars to almost level. Find is a special type of relic called a sanctified relic that has mods that directly affect your character's build. You can only unlock one slot for this type of relic, and while these relics can't be crafted through conventional means, you may find special reward rooms in the sanctum that can modify them. These relics exist for this league only and provide a boost to character power for players who are able to master the sanctum. Okay. The sanctum league offers a roguelike experience that tempts you into taking risks and rewards you if those pay off. There's a lot to explore in the Sanctum, and we can't wait to hear about your experiences next week. Okay. In each expansion sure. leading up to Path of Exile 2's release, we're improving um, Path of Exile's endgame. Quick Sanctum thought looks pretty good. Could entirely depend on what the rewards are. Um, the rewards are bad. I'm not gonna do it. The rewards are good. I'm gonna do it. It's gonna it's gonna be literally like uh. Looks like a more complex version of, of Lake of Kalantra, so they better have made the rewards good because they learned from that mistake right away. With new you, you get to pick your rewards, though, I guess, and like do some risk reward calculations instead of just opening a chest that has nothing in it. So maybe, maybe it's better. New content to explore and improvements to how you customize your endgame experience. In the Forbidden Sanctum expansion, we're revamping the Atlas tree, reworking how Eldritch Altars function, and are introducing two new Atlas memories. New memories! The Atlas useful, tree is useful, generally useful working one. really well, but has a few problems we'd like to address. Uh, I just realized, like, the, the one for Essence is way more way better this league, because we don't have Essences on the... on Kirak. Just random thought, the, Kirak memory, the Essence memories would be way better. The tree offers you the ability to specialize in killing pinnacle bosses, providing extra rewards when you do so. While this sounds good on True. paper, it creates a situation where you're incentivized to specialize your tree for regular mapping, True. save up all of your boss fights, then respec fully into boss mode, and yep. then do all of your saved up boss fights before specking back again. Yep. Ideally, the design of the Atlas Tree would let you spec into one build and then just play the game. We have removed all boss bonuses from the <laughs> Atlas Tree and have baked some of them into the actual base properties of the boss fights. Okay. For example, you don't need to allocate the gaze into the Abyss Notable that makes the Elder more likely to drop a Watcher's Eye, as he just has that drop chance built in now. Okay. The Atlas Tree is now focused on allowing you to specialize into content that you encounter in every map. <laughs> I'm sorry, can we talk about this? <laughs> what is going on here? When do we get our hands on this? I want to review this because some of these are pretty wild. How'd they redo this? We also want you to be able to specialize into your favorite leagues even more deeply on the Atlas tree. Okay. For each of the 10 leagues that the tree lets you disable, we've added a bunch more passives to the tree. Yeah, the looks These more cluttered. These allow you to increase the league's spawn chance to much higher levels than currently possible, oh. and juice the league even further than before. We are making a number of changes to Eldritch Altars that mostly affect their rewards, but will also affect gameplay decisions you make involving them. Some of the key changes include splitting up the basic currency, scarab, and divination card rewards to be explicit in their description of what rewards you'll get. For example, instead of map bosses dropping three unknown basic currency items, the altar specifically says which currency item they'll drop. As part of this is huge, actually. 
chance to drop an additional Chaos Orb. Um, that I, didn't, I never ran Eldritch, so I don't think this existed, right? It's like drop additional currency. So, so pretty good. For this change, we've removed some of the lower value yet quite common currency rewards from the pool, such as Orbs of Augmentation and Orbs of Transmutation. Good. Speaking of Scarabs, these will be less available from altars, but we've improved their availability elsewhere to offset this. Rusted scarabs can now drop from the core drop pool, and we've added a vendor recipe that allows you to upgrade your scarabs up to gilded using the normal three no. to one ratio. We no, no, it better just be on the on the fragment tab too. That you just like like the same way as this work. Bonus action from your fragment tab okay. using the new upgrade. Sorry, drop the gun. We have made reward types exclusive to different influences, so that you know which influence type to invest in if you want to target farm a certain reward. Okay. To give you a specific example. If you Please. run maps influenced by, say, Eater of Worlds, you'll see Divine Orbs from the basic currency reward Ooh. more than twice as often as before. Okay. We've also rebalanced rewards so that choices that affect boss drops or influence monster drops are comparatively more valuable. The Wrath of the Cosmos Keystone has been reworked. Previously, it was so rewarding that players felt obligated to use it despite its extreme level of difficulty. I wonder what it says first. Eldritch alters, Eldritch alters influenced by the Syrian XR have a 50% chance to have an additional upside. Eldritch alters influenced by the Syrian XR have an additional up, have, which have an additional upside of 100% increased effect of down. Okay. And it's only Syrian XR now. You can't just slap this on either of worlds anymore. It has retained the risk versus reward element, but with the overall intensity toned down. You can now also get Awakened Gems from defeating Maven Witness map bosses. This additional reward helps further balance the expected returns from the various types of influence. For more detail on these changes, check out the balance manifesto we posted last week, or the upcoming patch notes. Done. Thank you. In All the right. of Calandra expansion, we introduced Atlas Memories. When Not applied up to on Atlas, this. they unlock a sequence of maps that tells the story of an NPC's past. These stories manifest as specialized encounters that involve a new challenge and exciting rewards. Yes. In this expansion, we've introduced two new Atlas memories, Come on. describing events related to Beastry and Domination. The Beastry memory line allows you to capture harvest monsters as beasts for your menagerie. These oh. harvest beasts can be used in nine new beast crafting recipes. Okay. These recipes cover an array of options. For example, you can remove one of the special modifiers from a Watcher's Eye Jewel and then add another. Okay. This potent results, but won't affect the life, mana, or energy shield modifiers. You can re-roll an Awakened Gem from one type to another. Okay. Another example is that you can also re-roll a Synthesis Implicit modifier. If your item has more than one Synthesis this is good. Implicit, it will randomly re-roll one of them. The Domination Atlas memory thrusts you into But that was, like, level. really good, right? That's huge. All that stuff you just said was huge. Bug. 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 Pantheon gods that stand watch over their shrines. Like regular shrines, these are guarded by monsters and emit a buff that empowers the monsters until you claim that buff for yourself. Sure. This Atlas memory introduces a new set of shrines with specialized buffs, guarded by rare monsters that drop tantalizing rewards. The Forbidden Sanctum expansion introduces a new type of shard that can drop from Harbingers. Go on. Fracturing shards. When combined together into a full currency item, you get the Fracturing Orb, which behaves the same as the Fracturing Craft from Harvest. It can be used on any rare item with at least four modifiers. When the orb is applied... Fractory back in the menu. Or Har Harbinger back in the menu. It's on Kirak map mod for like 5 or 6C. Was going to be useless. This is pretty good. It locks one of the modifiers in place so that further crafting efforts do not affect that modifier. Items fractured in this way can only have one fractured modifier. Previously, this crafting option was gated behind the Oshabi fight in Harvest. Yep. Now that it has been rehomed to Harbinger, the harvest crafting option is no longer available. Okay. This means that you'll be able to use your harvest life force and Ashabi kills on other crafts. Because fracturing shards drop from harbingers, you'll be able to target farm them by specking into harbinger content on your atlas tree. Yeah, it's wild. The new skills! The Sanctum expansion introduces a number of new skill gems. In addition to some new melee Val skills we'll discuss later in the live stream, melee there are two totally skills. new skills that we'd like to unveil today. Okay. Volcanic Fissure is a new fiery slam skill that can be used with staves, maces, axes, and unarmed attacks. Strike the ground to create a chasm that winds towards your target. This chasm can path around corners before erupting as the fissure gets as close as it can reach. It releases a burst of fiery projectiles that explode on striking the ground. Enemies hit by multiple impacts will take a lot of stacked damage. 
Use it up close for reliable bursts of damage, or aim far away to damage a larger area. Okay. Frozen Legion is an unusual spell, summoning a ring of icy statues that attack with your own weapon damage. The skill has multiple cooldown stacks, and consumes all cooldown uses at once to summon a statue for each available cooldown. The statues perform a sweeping ice slash, and these sweeps can overlap, resulting in multiple hits against targets close to you. The spell can be used with staves, maces, and axes. The skill is particularly powerful with slow, heavy weapons, as while the statues will use your attack speed, you should instead prioritize the spell's own cast time and cooldown. This expansion also introduces many um, new I don't see the use for either of those. They're, they're cool. Like... Does that second one have a minion tag? Maybe. We'll have to check patch notes. All melee skills. As you know, equipping a Val skill gem grants you both the Val and regular version of the skill. As you kill enemies, the gem charges up with their souls, and after a certain number are collected, the Val skill can be used once. Yep. Most of the new Val skills introduced in this expansion are melee skills, and this results in an indirect buff to any melee builds that use one of these skills. Sure. Where yep. previously you'd just be using your melee skill to kill enemies, you now get to periodically use a super-powered version of the skill. If you like Flicker Strike, you'll love Val Flicker Strike, what? as it really dials up the concept of letting fate take the wheel. Oh no! Val Flicker Strike causes you to flicker dozens of extra times, slashing enemies. Unusable! During this time, you don't deal any damage to the enemies you slash. You're quite vulnerable due to not leeching or generating fortify stacks. When you finish flickering, if you survived of course, you'll be rewarded with a single huge hit of damage against each enemy you slashed. Val Cleave is a new Val skill that buffs the behavior of its non-Val version in a similar way to how Val Reeve works. Okay. Val Cleave triggers two buffs, one when you kill a rare enemy, and one when you kill either a rare or unique enemy. The latter is a strong buff to regular Cleave, which you can keep up almost permanently if you're able to kill rare or unique enemies often enough. Okay. The bonus for killing a rare enemy is that you get to steal its mods for a time. You can enjoy part of the power of having a headhunter without yeah. actually needing to find one. Overall, Val Cleave is a pretty powerful upgrade to any melee build that could run Cleave. Yeah, what the heck? That plus two radius buff is looking pretty good now, right? Don't hurt me. <laughs> Cringe. Um, they just gave Cleave an inspired learning? Is that what happened there? Okay. We'll showcase the other new Val skills we're introducing over the coming week. The Forbidden Sanctum Beta. expansion introduces over 15 new unique items, from Sanctum exclusive ones. uniques to ones that can be found from Path of Exile's pinnacle bosses. I'd like to show you three examples of these, designed by winners of our prior league's boss oh, yeah. races. Progenesis is a unique amethyst flask that was designed by Ben and drops from the Uber Maven. It's a defensive flask that grants a mini version of the petrified blood effect, but without requiring you to be on low life. This is a useful tool to prevent you getting one shot by large amounts of incoming damage in scary situations. Interesting. Rational Doctrine is a unique jewel that was designed by Rawlings and drops from Uber Venarius. By manipulating your attributes, you can change how this jewel behaves. While the ideal dream outcome is that you manage to get your strength and intelligence tied for highest, enabling both of the benefits simultaneously, oh. the jewel is still very powerful if it only grants your choice of permanent consecrated ground or permanent profane ground. Entropic Devastation is a pair of unique gloves that were designed by Gucci Pradas and dropped from the Uber Shaper. Currently, the ways to get Spell Impale are very limited. These gloves provide the powerful property of causing all of your spells to impale on crit. Cool. So let's talk about unique weapons. Specifically, endgame unique weapons. In many ways, the weapon is the most iconic and important item on a character, so it's yep. very important that we make them exciting and worthy of their unique status. While some unique weapons have special properties that enable entirely new builds, others are best compared to powerful rare items as a primary source of your character's damage. We have to be very careful when pitching the power level of these unique weapons. If they're not powerful enough, then they're useless and are ignored. But if they're too powerful, then they discourage entire archetypes of characters from trying to find or craft rare weapons. True. Interestingly, the above problem doesn't apply to belts. Despite Mageblood and Headhunter both existing as extremely powerful unique items, people still craft plenty of rare belts. That's because Mageblood and Headhunter are extremely rare, and people don't actually expect they'll reliably get one in a league. Yep. Players tend to treat them as luxury upgrades to their build, rather than something they're certain to get. In this expansion, we're promoting 10 iconic but underused unique weapons to the same tier of rarity as Mageblood and Headhunter. Oh. We are buffing them a gigantic amount, and are making them incredibly hard to find. Oh, hold on. Full taker. Alright. 
Grease does damage. So. Wait, am I stupid or is this like not much better? Ten iconic but underused unique weapons to the same tier of rarity as Mage Blood and Headhunter. We are buffing them a gigantic amount and are making them incredibly hard to find. Remember when Starforge Wait. used to be an exciting item? Wait, Soul Taker. Hold on. Isn't Soul Taker? Isn't Soul Taker part of the recipe for Kingmaker? Isn't Kingmaker just expensive now? Like impossible. Well, after this change, it certainly is again. It still drops exclusively from the Shaper and the Uber Shaper, but it'll take a lot of runs or a lot of luck to earn it. Over the next week, we'll reveal the other unique weapons that have been massively buffed. We have targeted around 10 iconic underused unique weapons and have generally buffed only their damage stat, but by a lot. Uh, this is pretty good, no? We've made a number of changes to jewels that are covered in a recent balance manifesto, but in case you missed it, we want to quickly summarize what the changes are. Uh, okay. In the Forbidden Sanctum expansion, we have made jewels a better source of ailment mitigation the by buffing the values of ailment-focused jewel modifiers and yeah. adding new modifiers that enable mitigation to a wider variety of ailments than before. We have also removed some ailment mitigation modifiers that were only available on jewels through corruption because there are now better options through the regular jewel mod pool. Sure. This also yep. means that other desirable corruption modifiers, like immunity to corrupting blood, are more likely to roll. We want the moment of finding a unique jewel to be way more exciting than it currently is. Yeah, it was terrible. We've added a handful of new, very powerful unique jewels and have removed some old, less interesting ones. An example of one of these new unique jewels is Fire Song, which propagates any modifiers to your ignite mitigation to other elemental ailments. Oh, interesting. If you're able to substantially reduce the duration of ignites on you, then you can use Fire Song to basically shrug off any elemental ailment. Okay. For full information about That's the other cool. changes to unique jewels, check out the Balance Manifesto post we made recently. We've rebalanced curses to make them a for this too. against unique monsters and pinnacle bosses. We have buffed several hex-related unique items and reworked unique items that previously interacted with Doom. Okay. To replace the Doomsday Keystone passive, we have brought back a version of an iconic curse-related keystone from the past. We've introduced some powerful new unique items that interact with hexes, which we'll reveal These were in the manifesto. Launch. For more details on changes to curses, check out the balance manifesto we posted recently, yeah. or the patch notes that will come out after the livestream concludes. When we first created the Arch Nemesis monster mod system, our goal was to improve Path of Exile's outdated set of monster mods with new and interesting mechanics. Bad violin. Bad violin right now for Nemesis. We Path feel that Arch Nemesis did introduce a lot of interesting mechanics, but it unfortunately had several of its own problems. Great. We have replaced Arch Nemesis with a system that is more similar to the way monster mods worked in the past. Let's go! The new monster mods are a lot simpler. They now each do one thing and very clearly state what they do. Each encounter oh, yeah. with a rare monster is now less complex and is easier to understand in the heat of combat compared to Arch Nemesis. Yeah. You'll still encounter challenging combinations of mods from time to time, but this emergent synergy will be rarer than it was under Arch Nemesis. The goal is that combat is interesting and varied, with moments that get your heart racing, but without the frustrations of the Arch Nemesis system. Let's talk about rewards. But... Under Arch Nemesis, it often felt mandatory to bring in a magic find culling character to kill some monsters for you in order to maximize your rewards. True. In the new system, we've added a significant pool of new rewards to rares, but the reward that is on the monster is hidden and not associated with a specific mod, so you don't know what kind of rewards you will get until you kill the monster. Ah. Rare monsters with more mods are more likely to have these special hidden reward bonuses. Sure. To find out more about other balance changes that are taking place in the Forbidden Sanctum, check out the patch notes which will be available when the live stream ends. Patch notes, let's go! Over the last year or so, some of our senior developers have been tinkering with a more challenging way to play Path of Exile. We've been publicly alpha testing this mode, known as uh, for the last totally hear about this part. and are planning to make it available to anyone who's interested alongside the launch of the Forbidden Sanctum next week. Ruthless is an optional additional character flag like Hardcore or Solo Cell Found that completely changes how Path of Exile feels to play. Ruthless is a lot more difficult than regular Path of Exile, but it doesn't achieve this by making the monsters harder to kill. It instead focuses on reducing character power through extreme item scarcity, limited crafting, and many right. other changes Real question. support gems. When League starts, 
Who's playing Ruthless? How many, how many people are actually going to play Ruthless on League Start? Like, none, right? It's being drop only. We've posted an article about the philosophy and rules of Ruthless on pathofexile.com slash Ruthless. We plan to release this mode alongside the Forbidden Sanctum expansion in a week. In addition to being a character flag like Hardcore or Solo Self-Found, it's also available as a modifier for private leagues. To be clear, the Forbidden Sanctum League content can be played in Ruthless with appropriately balanced rewards. Ruthless is still very experimental during 320, and we won't be afraid to make mid-league balance changes to it during this experimental phase. Ruthless okay. is not for everyone, but so far yeah. it has found a supportive and growing group of players who enjoy the additional challenge that it brings. If it sounds like something you're interested in, then try it out next time you're I looking just, for a new way to I control. just don't believe that, given given the other new league options, like Hardcore Soul, Soul Found, and Trade League, you're going to play Ruthless. I, just, I don't see it. I don't know. I think it's popular right now because there's nothing else to do in Path of Exile. Sorry, Path of Exile. This expansion also quality of life. a number Always of good. quality of life improvements. Some examples are Divine Vessels can now be used by right-clicking them rather than taking them to sin. Oh, thank god. On the player overhead life bar, the energy shield bar is split into a separate bar. Yes. You can now right-click an itemized temple of Atsuatl to see its layout. Good. And most importantly, beast crafting recipes that add mods to flasks now actually say what the mods do. Okay. We'll post more information about these and other quality of life improvements in the lead up to release. All good stuff. Oh, that's always good. Today we're launching two new series of supporter packs. Get out the, the walls. Forge and Gemlink packs. Each tier contains the pack's full face value. Guard armor set summons wow, a hammer cool. and turns your item linking attempts into a spectator sport. Oh if no. If you manage to hit a six link, people watching are even prompted to send a congratulatory message. <laughs> no. Summoning the crow storm portal effect causes a murder of crows to erupt from the portal. The portal becomes dormant if you are too far away from it, causing the link pack series also has six exclusive microtransactions. The beehive weapon effect lets your weapon quicksilver flask makes you so interested in these. gems that match the gems you've socketed in your items. Crafting gems with gem cutters prisms, val orbs, or regrading lenses visualizes the process for all to see. Oh man, these are actually kind of cool, but... Gem level up effects. Prospero's ring blesses you with a constant shower of coins, and it helps <laughs> you thank players you've traded with through a hearty fist bump. The consuming ooze pet bounces alongside you and devours corpses and blesses you with a constant shower of <laughs> coins, <laughs> and it helps <laughs> you thank players you've traded with through a hearty If somebody comes into my, into my hideout and this happens, I'm putting it on block. I'm sorry. Fist bump. The consuming ooze pet bounces alongside you and devours corpses in your wake, spitting out a tidy pile of bones. Finally, this pack allows you to reunite with Kadero Perandus, inviting him to your hideout as a vendor. In addition to buying items from you and using his connections to accept your divination cards, he'll provide commentary on your goods, equipment, and anything else he sees fit to judge you for. That might be a little too much to drink, even for me. Kadiro has hundreds of lines of voice acting. What? Oh, a mighty headhunter. I'm so impressed. Yeah, I'm good. Impressed. Thanks. Pass. I mean, wow, everywhere. cool. Can't you wait. Want to sully your armor. These new packs are available right now at pathofxl.com. Right now? Purchases like these directly fund the ongoing development of Path of Exile 1 and 2, and we really appreciate your support. Meanwhile, the Knight and Rogue packs leave the store forever in one week, so now's your last chance to purchase them. The Calandra edition of Kirik's Vault Pass is only available until the end of the Calandra League, and will be replaced with a new set of unique items when the Forbidden Sanctum launches. I think I bought this league. We're hoping to film Season 11 of Build of the Week once the Forbidden Sanctum comes out. If you want to submit your build for the season, share your build guide on the class forums on pathofexile.com. Next up, we've got the Q&A with Ziggy D. All right. Once that ends, we'll post the full patch notes patch for notes. Forbidden Sanctum. Let's go. Over the next week, our community team will post the expansion's challenge rewards, information on how to update your item filters, all new and changed gems, and information on how to prepare for launch. On launch weekend, we expect to release the new mystery box and we'll follow up for the new Kirix Vault Pass in the days after launch. Go. Thanks for joining us and All checking right. out the. There it was. Um, I'm uh, cautiously optimistic. The arch nemesis thing alone is is reason for optimism.
Um, league mechanic, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what the rewards are. That's that's, that's going to be all that comes down to. And yeah, cautiously optimistic. We'll wrap the video up. This is just a live reaction. Um, thanks for watching. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you stuck it out this long, or if you sk skip to the end. Uh, we've been doing a bunch of content this week for 3.20. I'll do a patch notes read through. I mean, probably, probably a TLDR. I don't want to make another video this long. I'll TLDR. I'll mean, do that. Make a video and do some starter builds in the next couple days. So like, subscribe, comment. Check out my Twitch link down below. Thanks for watching.